Good day off yesterday, I hope. Um, happy Labor Day to all of you. I hope you're having a nice day, um, although you're here. So um, appreciate you being here on this holiday. Um, I would uh, start by just saying, looking back at the game, uh, hats off to NAU's physicality. Uh, those guys played physical football. That was a hard-hitting game. And uh, I thought that they brought it every single snap. And, um, you know, I think Coach Ball's team was – they were ready to play. And uh, there were some hits in that game that were extremely impressive um, on both sides. But uh, certainly uh, I thought they were much more physical um, than two years ago and uh, really good. You know, they're going to have a good year this year. Um, looking back at the way our team played after watching the film, I would say uh, once again, uh, we had some opportunities. We only had four drives in the first half. It was a strange game. I think it was nine possessions total. Um, we wound up scoring on six um, of the, or five of those possessions. Uh, it's a, it was a strange game. The new timing certainly uh, speeds things up a little bit. So um, by far, I mean, we averaged nine yards a play, which I think is like fifth most in the country at this point in time. But uh, we only had 50 some odd plays. Uh, so offensively, we were efficient. Uh, we did a nice job. We avoid two turnovers in the red zone and um, could have made for a great day. Uh, of course, you can't avoid those uh, unless you hold on to the football. You don't scramble when unnecessarily taking hits. And um, we just really missed on the throw to Team Mac. Uh, we just left it a little bit behind him and he spun around and probably want to stay in front of the corner in that case. Defensively, I would say without question, our defense uh, communicated fantastically well, played with great effort. Um, we need to not have five penalties that are personal fouls. We talked about that as a staff, uh, whether it be the unnecessary roughness on a punt, whether it be an unsportsmanlike conduct um, with a shove late, whether it be two roughing the passers or whether it be a targeting, we just can't have those plays. Uh, that is not going to work against an SEC opponent this week. So we have to be more discipline there but in regards to being challenged to be more physical they were being challenged to run to the ball they were fantastic being challenged to play with great effort they did that and being challenged to become elite communicators they're working very hard at that as well uh great field goal block uh by by uh tai tai and return by takario uh, we spent a lot of time working those and that was fantastic in teams so when you look at overall can't have a holding penalty on a return, we cannot have um, a roughing penalty. But um, for the most part, I think all three phases played at a high level and gave us a chance to win. But now we are on to Mississippi State. Uh, certainly a very tough opponent. Uh, I think that uh, Coach Arnett has done a great job defensively over there. Now as the head coach, I'm sure he'll continue to do a great job. Uh, but the defense is the defense. Uh, saw them play against Southeast Louisiana. Um, they are tough to move the ball on. He knows exactly all the answers to the test. You could tell uh, he's been in that defense for a very, very long time. Either running it, coaching it, being a GA in it, whatever it might be, he is uh, an expert in that defense. So we got our work cut out for us there. I've not seen much of their offensive film yet. I do understand that they ran the ball for 300 yards. I do know that they're a little bit more balanced of an offense than they have been in the past, and uh, we'll have our work cut out for us there. Um, and we're excited about the challenge. We're excited about going down to Starkville. Uh, I've only been there one other time. It was not a pretty sight when I was there. It was a uh, – we got beat pretty bad at the University of Florida that year. Um, Coach Jackie Sherrill put it, put it on us that day. So uh, we got to have a better day than that and uh, know that the cowbells will be out. And uh, we'll be ready for them the best we can. Well, with that being said, the cowbells, are you guys going to practice that? Are you guys going to maybe pump in cowbell noises during practice this week? Yeah, I think you have to be alert for it. You know, the cowbells are not allowed to be um, ringing when, the four, when you're in formation. They're only allowed to be ringing when you're in a huddle or when you're going between plays. Uh, they're not uh, out when you're going through your cadence. There's no cowbells. And I know that they're very disciplined on that, is that's a penalty. But uh, other than that, I know they're going to be loud. I know they're going to be something we need to be aware of. We'll have some cowbells piped in this week. 
And uh, we're going to look forward to the energy that an SEC game brings. Ty Ty had the field goal block. He also played a lot of snaps as well on defense as an tackle. He's put on weight. It seems to not have slowed him down at all. Can you just describe his sure. development as a prospect and what the outlook is for him? Yeah, I think what uh, we're seeing from him is he's gained about 25 pounds. He's up to in the 260s right now. Um, and he's, he's playing at a level where he can play on a tight end as a defensive end. He could be moved inside on third down and give you pass rush ability. He plays with incredible efforts. He's running really well because he's like a 240-pound guy that became a 265-pound guy rather than a 290-pound guy that slimmed down. So his athleticism has maintained – he's maintained his athleticism as he's gained his weight. Uh, he's also done a nice job on special teams. Obviously, we saw part of that with the big block that went on um, for the field goal. But he's, all, he's a quiet, hardworking, disciplined um, – you don't notice him until you notice him guy. And uh, he made some big plays against UCLA a year ago as a true freshman. He had a big sack in that game. And uh, as we continue to see his improvement, it's certainly um, showing up in a, in a lot of different ways. I think he's going to be a big contributor for us uh, during the season. Uh, Afisha's had a great game. Um, you know, there would be a play or two, I think, that um, they might have had a shot at. Uh, and they might have made one catch on him. I, you know, I don't know how many PBUs total. But what I loved about him is he triggered. You know, there was times that that jet sweep they ran on third and goal uh, down there during the, the uh, goal line stand. It was him that chased the guy over the top and came down and triggered him right in the hole there uh, to stop him from getting in the end zone. He tackled really well. He's got great range. I mean, you're talking about a six foot four corner that can run. So when you have that, it's when you play man coverage, it's a lot harder to be able to throw around him because of his length and um, his speed. So he's getting more physical. He's getting stronger in the weight room. He's getting bigger. When I mean bigger, I mean he's getting uh, more weight on him and he's getting confidence. And as he's continuing to grow and build confidence, uh, he's going to be a really good corner for a lot of years. With Troy, David, and Raymond, when looking at the offensive line, obviously Raymond Polito was missing from the game, but how do you think they handled that and what did you see with the communication out there? Yeah, I think it was a little tricky just because of the fact that Raymond was taking all the reps of the ones for two weeks straight. And then all of a sudden, after your last practice, you don't have them. So there wasn't even a practice other than a walkthrough in the hotel ballroom that we were able to even get the communication right. Uh, it's really a credit to Josh Baker and Big Jonah that when Sam went in or JT went in, that they were able to get all the calls out and they were able to help him and make keep him confident. And JT did a really good job. Sam did a good job. Both of those guys are going to have to play again this week um, unless something changes. We won't know um, about Raymond really until, I'm going to say, Thursday or Friday. We'll, we'll, we'll actually know if he'll be cleared to play or not. So uh, those guys are going to have to continue to step up. And then Joe Borjan came in and stepped in uh, in that left tackle role probably for about 24 minutes, you know, the last uh, – the second half of the third quarter on and did a really good job as well. But Jordan is doing great. And Jordan will be ready to go. Jim, obviously, the situation with the runner, I mean, how are you guys teaching that now in terms of – I would lead with your shoulder. Lead with your shoulder is the best way to, to say it. You just can't lead with your face mask. So as long, you're just going to have to turn a little bit more than you normally would. And um, now if there's any chance of a catch tackle, do the catch tackle. Because if you just go flying in there with a shoulder and you miss, you know, you're, you're, you got a problem. Right. But uh, if you just lead with your shoulder, tackle with your shoulder, keep your head out of it. Um, and you're just going to have to deal with some of those plays that aren't necessarily the same blow up shots. You know, you go back in time and you look at all the blow up shots of old and you want to try to, you know, get your defense going and you go look at some of the film and you're like, I can't show any of these. Right. None of these blow up shots of old are the same are allowed any longer. 
So you have to do really, uh, you have to be disciplined and you have to lead with your shoulder. Justin, um, Justin Flo, um, his snap total, uh, what did you make of that and what, what's the plan for him? Just keep getting better. Um, I think that uh, he made some, he certainly showed up when he played. Uh, you saw him get in there. There was a chance that he almost ripped the ball out on one one play um, closer to our sideline on a run. Came in very physical, chased down uh, wheel route on the backside, made a tackle down the field. And so, you know, I think that his snap count will continue to increase as he continues to get more confident in the system and more knowledgeable in the system and is able to play within the system. And as he's continuing to do that, his snap count will continue to increase. With Jason. Um, kind of two questions. One, uh, a, a bit on the Stukes. You had one, and then also, how do you handle Adrian Gunner missing the first half? How do you handle the, the Stukes? Um, nothing yet, other than he's improving. Um, that's another one that we won't know until Thursday or Friday, based on all the protocols that are in place. Uh, we can't make those decisions. Uh, that'll be told to us by the training staff. When it comes to the position, so Gunner will be have to sit the first half of this coming game. And, you know, we have IT, we have Dalton, we have DJ Warnell, we have Irby, and then we have Price Sock, we have Takario. So we have a, a really good group right there that can rotate through. And um, I feel really good about that group of six. And then uh, G7 came in and played well too in his five snaps. So when you start adding those guys all up, um, I think what we'll probably see is in the smoothest transition would just be IT for Gunner. Um, and then, but we'll see what that other competitions look like. Genesis came in, played really well as well. So does Genesis and IT and Dalton all rotate. Uh, we'll work through that in practice Tuesday and, or, uh, yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday. Damien and Mitchell. You talk about teaching the guys at the shoulder. What's it like for Chuck Cecil, a guy who made his name off the this? <coughs> You know, it's part of the game. I don't, I think uh, he, he knows it's part of the game. He knows the game is not the same as it once was. And uh, he does a great job of coaching his safeties up and explaining the differential between what it was when he played, which was 30 years ago, versus now. And um, does a great job of explaining that to him. And Gunner knows. That was Gunner came right up to me and said, Coach, I'm sorry that, that – I, I need to be better. And he knows that. And so do all of our guys. And so do most guys that get thrown out for targeting. It just, unfortunately, there's some instincts that occur that you had, that you sometimes get caught up in the, the game and that mistake happens. Jordan and Mike, you talk about the cowbell, cowbells a little bit, but also there's the humidity and heat of the SEC. How do you assimilate that in a week of practice or is it even able to be assimilated? I think we practice in the heat enough that our guys can handle. Yes, it's a different heat, but I think an 85 degree day with humidity or a 105 de degree day with no humidity are probably pretty comparable. I would put our guys conditioning up against anybody's. Uh, so I feel really good about that. Michael and Mitch Ryan for the last one. T-Max touchdown looked like it was set up by the previous touchdown and cowling, very similar looking play as if you threw to the screener, I guess, on that one. Is that something that was in your playbook, or did you sort of, did that spring to mind at some point, hey, what if we did this? How did that all come into play? We, um, when we were watching the uh, TV show, The Quarterback, there's a, a part of the game where Patrick Mahomes gets to take about five minutes and come up with a creative play and uh, in practices on Wednesday, and he gets to practice with the receivers, and I guess, uh, my man Jaden came up with a creative play with T Mac, and they made an uh, they made an adjustment during the game, an on field adjustment that if they fall off this, this is what I want you to do, and uh, they clearly were on the exact same page on that, and um, we give them a, a five minutes of a, a Jaden period where he can come up with some creativity. Last question, is Ryan. You're good at that too. Screen and roll. You ever uh, been in a game where you only have five third down? Then at the same time, um, how do you make sure that you're still effective on third down when you're able to move the chains and stay ahead? Yeah, it was a weird game, right? Uh, like at one point we were one for two, and it was like almost at halftime or one for three at halftime. It was like the weirdest deal. Um, 
but yet we weren't able to convert on the easy ones, right? It's a third and three. We don't make it. It's a third and two. We didn't make it. It was a third and five at the end of the game. We didn't make it. Um, so we got to be better in third down. I know that sounds weird because we only had five of them, but you know, we got to be better in third down. We're going to have more this week. And, um, we threw the one out route to T Mac, uh, thought maybe he could have grabbed it, you know, and he, he maybe it got on him a little quick. We threw a, a, a fade ball at the end of the game, you know, it was 38 to three or at that point. And, um, we wound up missing him there or 35 to three where we kicked the field goal. We had the one with Noah where we ran the ball on third down in, when the game was 38 to three with two minutes left or three minutes left. And we ran a little toss crack play. So it was kind of strange, you know, in regards to what we were, what we were calling, what was the situation, what was the score and how necessary was that conversion. All right.